Hey, hey, everybody, it's Eddie from Tokyo. This is your cryptocurrency update from Japan. I've got a couple of really good stories. We'll go at it quickly. Hang in there towards the end if you're an SBI Holdings group because they just came out with a new press release about 90 minutes ago. But first, I want to talk about GMO Internet Group. You might not be aware of this company if you don't live in Japan, but they are a very big force to reckon with, and they are moving in the crypto space quite aggressively. So I, I want to do just an overview really quick to give you the size of this company. They do um, have a corporate slogan saying, saying uh, Internet for everyone. They started back in 1995 and they currently have 106 companies under their umbrella, nine of which are publicly traded. 44% of the employees are creators and engineers, and they have over 5,000 partners. They're in 22 countries and 61 locations overseas. You can see most of their locations here are in Asia, but they do have locations in the UK, Belgium, Russia, and the US. They did a consolidated net sales in fiscal 2017 of 145 billion yen with an operating profit of 19 billion. And if we take a look at the pie chart, 18.2% uh, uh, is internet finance. So they have FX trading, securities trading, domain registrar, domain registry, hosting, cloud services, security, payment services, uh, e-commerce solutions. Just right now, only 1.4% of their business is in cryptocurrency, but that is going to change soon. They have estimated a 900% increase in their mining business alone. So the 1.4% represents about 140,000 accounts. And then they have an online advertising and media department, which is 27.4%. And then internet infrastructure, about 52.3% of their business or 9 million customers. So this gives you a quick oversight of how big they are. Uh, I just thought it would be fun for you to see. This is one of their ad campaigns. I see this in billboards. I see it in print magazine. I see it on the internet. Uh, I see it everywhere, actually. So this is their current promotion for their exchange. On Tuesday, the 17th of July, 2018, they have announced a notice of the launch of an internet banking business, uh, GMO A Ozora Net Bank. That's my little Momo down there sharpening her claws, sorry. Um, Aozora, which means blue sky, is a bank um, that is a full-fledged bank. Now, as you know, Charlie Lee from Litecoin just took a 9.9 .9 stake in Wegbank in Germany. And I think, you know, some of these banks have not been very friendly to crypto. What was it in just this year, February of 2018, we had some banks in the U.S. that refused to do business with um people in allowing them to buy cryptocurrency with their credit cards. So I, I, I don't want to say anything, but I think this is a trend and I think we're going to see a lot more of this. Um, for those banks who don't want to cooperate with the space, uh, move over because these exchanges and these mining companies are going to provide their own banking services in a very legitimate way. So as you can see here, um, this is, you know, they are going to go after the demographics that are young and really want a cashless uh, solution. So everybody's going towards mobile in Asia and they are going to launch a next generation internet banking business. It's a platform to respond to these new demands. And they're gonna be leveraging high security certificate, the blockchain, AI, internet of things, the next generation media. I, I think that absolutely, if you're not aware of GMO, this is a company that you should pay attention to. Okay, so, boy, it didn't take long for them either to 
promote their um, solutions. This is one of the ads that are out there on today's uh, internet. So here it is. On June 6, they started taking pre-orders for Japan's first ever Bitcoin mining rig. Now, GMO is really aggressive also in the mining business, and they are competing with Bitmain. Bitmain right now has about an 80% market share, and they are going after that market with a new uh a rig called a B, what's it called? It's called a B2. And it's going to retail for $1,999 compared to the $837 for the S9 that is currently being used almost all the time. But the specs in the B2 are vastly superior to those of Bitmain's flagship product. So they are much faster at the um, hash rates per second and they have a a significant difference in the power consumption. These units, which uh, they started taking pre-orders about a month ago, are anticipated with a ship date in October. So because of this, the company has stated that it hopes to achieve um, a hash rate that by the end of the year represents more than a 900% increase from their current levels. So in May, they were able to mine 472 Bitcoin and 37 BCH. Yeah, so I this is just this is just a company that I think you're going to hear more and more about. I couldn't help but just share this ad at the height of our pricing in December of 2017, they had a cute ad. Um, it says that the GMO coin uh, is sold out of Ripple. And there was such a huge demand for Ripple at that time that uh, they played on that. And I'm sure it got a lot of attention uh, because there was just, you know, everybody in Japan was going crazy for the coin. All right, this next story is for everybody out there. Yeah, you watching this video, because if you've got skin in the game, I need to tell you that you can participate in influencing the SEC. I really do believe so. So they are currently being flooded with positive Bitcoin ETF comments. And as you know, um, there has been a new application filed. This is the third one, actually, by this gentleman. Uh, what's his name? Van Van Eck. He's the asset manager of Solid X, and they are backed by the SBOE, which is um, the SBOE Global Markets is the father company to the SBOE, which is the largest options uh, exchange in the United States. And so between now and about August uh, 16th, you'll be able to submit your comments on why you think or you don't think uh, ETFs should be a part of the space. Now, uh, JP Morgan said in uh, well, what, February of this year that definitely ETFs are the holy grail for the crypto space. Um, if you will, an ETF is, is like uh, a fund that has ownership of an asset, a real asset. So that asset could be gold, could be oil, could be crops. Uh, in this case, it's Bitcoin. And then I'm sure it can be uh, once they get Bitcoin, it can be other coins that will follow. And you can then um, take uh, action and buy and trade these shares. So they're going to create baskets. They will be absolutely responsible for the custody of the Bitcoins. And within these baskets of shares will be blocks of five. And the five shares, uh, each share has 25 Bitcoins, which is about 167,000 US dollars at today's price. And then you'll be able to um, through the company. You won't have to worry about if it's hacked. You won't have to worry about losing your keys. 
Uh, they are, yes, uh, centralized, but it will be insured. They'll track the price. I understand they're going to do it um, to begin with on Bitstamp, GDEX, uh, GDAX, Gemini, ItBit, Bitflyer, and Kraken. And all the coins will be in a multi-signature cold storage wallet, and it'll carry insurance. And this is what the institutional investors want. And this is really if it gets passed, this really will change the entire space forever. And it's going to be able to bring the institutional investment money like we've never seen before. So I think if you have an opinion, you need to share that opinion. You can go to the U.S. Security uh, Securities and Exchange Commission website, which I'll put the link down in the comment section so you have no excuse to find, not find it. And this link will tell you how to submit your comments. Your comments will be public, so keep that in mind. And all the comments that have been submitted thus far are in this page. And you know what? It's everything from um, people like you and I, uh, uh, like you and me, Oh, and even the biggest of the players in the space. So when you take a look at the first one on the top of the list, it's well written. But let me just read you the last closing statement he says. He says, if I want to buy $1,000 in Bitcoin, it costs me $3 in fees. If I want to invest $50 in my Vanguard, it costs me $9. Protect those who are truly the most vulnerable there is no obligation of yours to protect those sitting behind large financial regulatory infrastructural moats simply to keep the status quo. Yeah. And then you know, here's one from Brendan Hathaway. And it's very short, very sweet, very simple. I fully support a Bitcoin ETF blockchain technology has the potential to positively impact our economy thanks to its efficiency and near limitless use cases. SEC approval on the regulation would go a long way towards the legitimization of this new asset class and help cement the U.S. place in the world as a technological leader. Best regards, Brendan Hathaway. So you don't have to write something long. You don't have to write something that is going to be published in some, you know, high regard of, uh, you know, well, well, I guess I'm trying to say is that if you have an opinion, if you want to see this space grow, uh, you don't have an excuse not to put your two cents in, okay? So don't be afraid to put your comments in writing. Okay, I promised that if I saw an uh, SBI advertisement in regards to their new SBI VC trading site, I would share it with you. So this is one of those ads that are bringing new people to sign up for the VC trade site. And I just wanted to make sure that I did follow through and share that with you. So this is pretty much out on the internet now. Okay, so this is kind of big news. Just about 90 minutes ago or two hours ago, um, SBI used from their crypto investment fund, um, they have made a stake in a company called Lancium, and they are a wind power generation company. So the Lancium Technologies manages data centers in the U.S., and this 30% stake will allow them to participate in clean mining. So they do large scale wind power and basically what they're doing is they are purchasing um, surplus electricity that's generated from wind power and then they use that to um, power their mining businesses. So this is Ray Klein and he is the chief mining officer and you can read a little bit about it. He's responsible for the cryptocurrency strategy and initia initiatives of Lancium. And basically, if we come down to the bottom, you can just see here 
Lancium is, um, yeah, is a, a cryptocurrency, simultaneously cryptocurrency and blockchain technology has provided an increasing demand for electricity supply to perform the proof of work computations that provide validation and security of cryptocurrencies and smart contracts through mining. So counter to the original thesis of the globally distributed computational infrastructure, the economies of cryptocurrency mining have resulted in large centralized mining farms. So Lancium is addressing the technical challenge of developing decentralized distributed infrastructure that can be used to balance grid dislocations. Uh, and then he talks about um, his presentation that he gave in Austin, Texas, where they uh, talk about those solutions. So, yeah, it's it's interesting. And I'm really happy to see that SBI is uh, moving towards a clean solution. OK, everybody. Gosh, get your letter in by August 16th, because the SEC is going to make a ruling on that uh, ETF sometime between August 16th and they have till like September 30th. So just wanted to remind you to get that in. All right, now comes your fluff story. If you're new to the channel, I usually have some story that focuses on Japan. So here we go. Talking about clean energy, this is Panasonic's uh, Smart Town and it is fully uh, uh, dependent on solar power. So this is in Fujisawa, and Fujisawa is not far from Tokyo. It's just about 30 minutes um, south towards Kamakura on the Tokaido line, and it's a, kind of a beach town. Uh, it's, it's the start of where um, surfers love to live, and this is built on an old Panasonic factory site. And there are 600 houses, 400 apartments, and everything is on a smart grid. And it's fed by the solar panels. So the street lighting, the security, the electricity, even has a heat pump for the water. And the, the great thing is, is that it can even um, be off the grid for three hours with all of the surplus energy that it can store, which is important for natural disasters. And in this country, it's really important. I mean, especially when we have earthquakes, the power gets disrupted. Um, the, the, the town itself is designed in kind of a leaf shape, and that leaf shape layout allows for a breeze to flow through all the streets, which I think is interesting. And the residents also have access to, they have special access to electric bikes and electric vehicles. So this is kind of a uh, group collage of pictures that are taken in or around the smart town. Even the houses have been built uh, above the earthquake standard. So it's 1.8% uh, above the current earthquake standard, which is very, very high and strict in Japan. Uh, so the houses look, um, yeah, quite nice. I, I think this is a great model for the rest of the world to follow. And I just wanted to share a little bit of that, especially since we had the Fukushima accident there has been a great awareness now for alternative forms of energy. And this one started, people started moving into this town in 2014. But if you come to Japan and you want to take a look, it's just about a 30 minute trip on the train south of here. Okay, everybody, that's it for you today. Thank you for listening. And uh, I wish you all the best. Sayonara for now. Bye bye.